Linda, thank you so much for joining us for this. And um, we're especially pleased to have you here as a member of council and the council that made the unanimous decision to rename what was Gady Hall to the gathering place. And we wanted to ask, what did that decision mean to you? Well, frankly, I was relieved. It, um, I know that why we named it Gady Hall, but because what the younger Gady represented um, was offensive to so many people and hurtful, it certainly didn't represent our values at St. John. And so that made me feel really good that we took that on and, and uh, unanimously decided to change the name. Dick, thank you very much for participating in this video. I know you because you and I have been um, members of the racial justice ministry for the last several years together. And um, I have always really been inspired by your champion of that, um, of that ministry. Do you want to address what this name change means to the racial justice ministry? Well, of course, it means so many things, but um, to me, um, I've thought about this uh, quite a bit. I, uh, words matter, and we need to use the words the best way we can. And the words I think of are St. John's Lutheran Church, which means we're a people of the gospel, hopefully, and at least that's what it would come imply, right? Um and the word Gady Hall is, is a tough one, or Gady itself, because of the uh, background of, of the person who gave all this money, not the pastor originally. Uh, and then the, the third word I really like is the gathering place, because I believe God created us to be a people of community. And so when we say the gathering place, we're implying that we do want to gather and we want to use this a facility in as many ways as possible. Thank you, Matt, for joining us for this. Was there anything else that you thought about in anticipation of making this video that you wanted to say? Yeah. So with the name Gady Hall, I really wanted to explain a bit of the progression around that. Because um, coming, being a new member in St. John's, when I first came, Gady Hall was the fellowship place. It was our tool to outreach to our community and was always doing great in the world. After discovering what Gady uh, meant in Sacramento, moving forward into the gathering place, it really opened up a brighter window for us to reach out to everyone. So not only will it continue to be a place of fellowship, a place of outreach, but this is also an opportunity for us to spread God's love in the world it also give us an opportunity to even touch those who may have been affected by Gady negatively in the past. Because together, brothers and sisters, we're one, we're one under Christ. Welcome in the name of Christ to St. John's Lutheran Church. Good morning. Good morning. morning to you here in person and those to you online. I'm Pastor John Haug. On behalf of myself, Pastor Frank, Pastor Amy, our entire staff and community, we're really glad that you're with us this morning here or there online. 
Um, a couple of announcements for you. If, if you are new, we'd love to get to know you a bit more. If you'd leave some information in one of the offering usher plates at the exits, there are welcome home cards in the pews. That would be great. Or online, our New to St. John's button. That would be a great way for us to get to know each other. We'd really like that. Um, some other announcements. You saw that video right here. Um, Tony Platt, who was in a video last week and is a, a professor and, at UC Berkeley and a scholar and expert of C.M. Gady, who was the grandson of our founding pastor, Matthias Gady. He's going to be here between the worship services giving a talk. It's going to be really interesting. So you're not going to want to miss that. If you're able, go downstairs to Ayler Hall to be a part of that. And that's kind of ahead of our June 5th um, Pentecost event. Um, we're asking if you can register for that. That's best. We're not going to turn anyone away, but if you can register, please do. That's going to be a kind of gathering place event and commissioning of the name of that place. So come be a part of that between the worship services as well. Um, today is our last day of Sunday school, so for our kids, there's a party happening over here, right, Sarah? Follow Sarah um, and others over to that area for an end-of-the-year Sunday school party. That's going to be fun. Um, at our 11 o'clock service today, we get to give out our scholarship and Morgan Awards, so that's going to be a, a blast at our 11 o'clock service. Um, yesterday afternoon, we had this great event here. It was our luncheon for our 85 and older club. That's just a club you got to earn your way into. Can I be real? That is an amazing club. Um, so we gathered with 25 or I don't know if we had a, a, a number, 25 or 30, 85 plus year olds. And it was great. Like the upper 90s talked about the youngins in the room. It was a fabulous event. Um, we honored them. Um, and it was just a privilege to gather and have a lunch, and it felt really great to be together. Um, in regards to that, would you rise in body or spirit? And as you greet your neighbor, we are going to sing happy birthday as you face the back of the sanctuary to a very special member, the oldest member of St. John's Lutheran Church. I kid you not, her name is Dorothy St. John. She's not with us here in the sanctuary, but her family's going to get this recorded worship service. She turned 104 yesterday. Pretty awesome. Let's sing happy birthday to Dorothy, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dorothy. Happy birthday to you. Remind us, Jesus, that we are connected to you. It is in your love for us that we find our love in you. Remind us, Jesus, that you are the way of peace. It is with you who said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Remind us, Jesus, when we fail to recall your words, that it is through your advocating, teaching spirit that we remember your way 
and our best life. Remind us that we believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Remind us that we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Remind us that we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The grace of Jesus Christ our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
a reading from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> and in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no, lamp of, they need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. your spirit for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. congregation to be seated. Pastor Amy, you have the children's message. That means children, please come forward at this time. Good morning. There's so many of you today. It's so good to see you. Is everyone doing okay today? Awesome. Well, I, I'm glad you're here because I'm having a really special exclusive party very soon. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a super fun party. It'll be a lot of like food and you know you can actually tell it like when you come to the party, you can tell me what your favorite foods are, I'll make sure I have them. We'll be singing, there's gonna be dancing, It'll be like some special guests. But I have to fill out my guest list, and so I'm glad you're here because I'm gonna uh, put you on the list. So if you just, I'm gonna go here, and then you just tell me your name. I'm gonna write write it down. So here we go. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Okay, Pastor John. Fine. Okay. You're taking a spot from someone, just so you know. So okay. So Pastor John. Got. Okay. Gary. You want to tell me your name so I can invite you to the super party, the exclusive party? Oh, and oh, someone else wants to be part of the party. I think I know all your names, so I'm just going to like write down some of your names. Oh, no. Okay, fine, fine. Do you want to come to the party? Nathan, okay. Yeah? Okay. Are you some May? And, oh, well, well I'll get, uh, hold on, uh, Pastor Frank. Okay. And Nadine, okay. Oh, Pastor Frank, you want to come to the party? Okay. Um, I kind of ran out. Of, I ran out of spots at my super exclusive party. Oh no! What am I going to do? Do you think I should invite Pastor Frank to? Okay. All right. Well, maybe. Okay. You could be on the waiting list for the super exclusive party. So if someone else cancels, then Pastor Frank can come. Okay. So this is my party. So I get to invite who I want. And maybe Pastor Frank can come. But if Jesus was going to have a party, how do you think Jesus would make the guest list? He would invite everyone who wants to come, right? I think so. And you know, usually you get an invitation. Maybe your friend invites you like this, like verbally. They'll say, hey, you want to come to my party next week? It's at this time you come, right? Sometimes you... Oh, so your brother's going to, you're going to be the host of a party soon. So I hope you, you know, think, think expansively in how you invite. But, but usually we invite people we know, of course, right, and who love us. And, um, and so, you know, Jesus invites anyone who wants to come. And, and Jesus' invitations don't come in the mail or an email or in a text. Jesus' invitation comes through the Holy Spirit, which we heard about in the gospel reading that Pastor Frank read. Um, and the Holy Spirit, like you said, gathers... Everyone who wants to come is kind of mysterious, but whoever shows up here, you get to be part of this party today. And worship is kind of like Jesus' party. He plays host at this meal, at this table. He feeds us. We sing songs together. Uh, we share love and care for one another in this space. And so I'm glad that you all, that the Holy Spirit invited you and brought you here today. Maybe it felt like your parents did that, but the Spirit does it in lots of different ways and gathers us here. And Jesus is the host of this great party. All right? So let's pray together, and then you can go back to your seats. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are the host of this amazing party today, and that you invite everyone who wants to come to be part of your family and to, be, um, to gather around uh, in music and singing and uh, praying and around the meal. We thank you for this great gift, and we ask that it would strengthen us uh, for service in the world. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Um, you know, all your invitations in the mail. <laughs> Good 
Grace and peace to you this day from God, our loving parent, and from the one who speaks the divinely authored word of love into our lives, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Can we just say at the beginning of this that the Holy Spirit can work through parents? I believe that's true. Do you, do you not also? Um, in all kinds of ways, uh, the people who teach us and guide us, we need, we need these people in our lives. This, uh, this um, adult education uh, forum in the middle of our services led by Professor Platt is teaching us and helping us to understand. And so we believe the Holy Spirit works in all kinds of important ways in our lives. Today's gospel text is a continuation of Jesus' farewell uh, discourse to his disciples in the Gospel of John. It's laid out with great care in that gospel. Time uh, feels like, as you are hearing it, is starting to get a little short. The disciples are starting to grow a little edgy. Um, they're beginning to take more notice, it feels like, of what Jesus is talking about. It's kind of like how we start to ask our wait-a-minute questions, making the what exactly do you mean inquiries when the teacher, the leader, the expert, the tech support person online the guide, the soon-to-be-gone beloved one, starts their leave-taking. That's usually a, I can't do this without you, realization moment for most of us. It's going, going, gone, as they say here in the baseball season. And then it is, feels like, at least, that it's left to us and for us to figure out what's left all on our own. The disciples are trying to get their last questions in now. Where are you going? They asked Jesus. How will you reveal yourself to us when you're gone? Is there an instruction manual? Well, I kind of added that last one, but it really seems to fit in there with the others, the tone of it anyway. Jesus listens to the disciples' questions, and He's going to respond, but He also does something else. He reads the room. This talk from Jesus that He's leaving and the rancor that He has stirred up around His legalistic, legalistically casual, grace-filled teaching has created a lot of anxiety. So much so that Jesus feels the need not only to respond to the disciples' questions, but also address their unasked, not fully formed concerns. And that is why he says things in this gospel text like, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Just like us, the disciples are not going to get anywhere in this life if their anxiety is setting up to win the day. Jesus addresses our anxiety, or at least tries to, with his disciples in every age. I was just away at a conference, the theological subject of which was anxiety in leadership. There's a fair amount of anxiety to go around in leadership and everywhere, if you haven't noticed. Of course, we all know that anxiety is a fact of life. It's there in our individual lives and in every organization. Anxiety arises in all sorts of ways. It can come from concerns that confront us from the outside, security issues, lack of opportunities, injustices. And I believe it's super important that we note here that some among us, us face and have historically faced more of these external threats and concerns than others of us have had to. And it is not right for those, those of us who find ourselves bearing less to accept that as just so. Over and over and over again, Jesus specially appoints us to respond to the outside threats that are aimed at and borne by others. So whether you are facing such threats yourself 
or your neighbor beside you is, the anxiety caused by these concerns is real and worthy of our attention and faithful and honest pursuit to acknowledge and as best we can address. God speaks into our external experience and urges us to follow Jesus with integrity. It is Jesus who says in our gospel text, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's truly a lifetime's work in front of us. Following Jesus is loving Jesus, is being changed by Jesus, is addressing through repentance our resistance to Jesus' call. Our calling is to stand as a force for good in our lives and the lives of our neighbors, to use Jesus' relational language. Our life also is, not, is to not be afraid to be changed when we should. Yes, anxiety is a real thing caused by the forces that come at us from the outside. But anxiety also comes at us from the inside, from the voices in our heads that we learned long ago that tell us things like all kinds of anxious stuff, like you're never enough, that they, whoever they are, are out to get you, that unless you're perfect, that unless you're worthy, that unless you beat out that other one, life will not, could not possibly be okay. All kinds of interior voices, all kinds of words. And the good news of today's gospel is that Jesus speaks into that constant noise and interior chatter, speaks to that tendency we all have to give in to our inner critic, the warped call to a spiritually inferior life but Jesus knows what's good for us and what is possible. Those who love me keep my word. Not easy much of the time because it is Jesus talking here. But can we hear Jesus' voice and receive it? Can we love Jesus because he first loves us? Trusting that in perfect love we might come to find that his word is both trustworthy and it is true. So whether the anxiety is coming towards you from the outside or is bubbling up within you, what we need to hear is Jesus' word breaking through. And the really good news is that Jesus has promised, has promised that God will not leave us stranded to wallow around all alone in this discerning work. Our only hope in getting this even a little bit right is to come to understand in a primary way that in our Christian journey, God is advocating for us, that God sends us the Holy Spirit to remind us of Jesus' words, that God comes up alongside us to give us the gift of God's very presence, to reside with us and lovingly lead us and correct us into all truth. That is why the most important aspect of Christian faith is to allow that advocate, that is God's Spirit, to open our hearts, to allow the peace of God which passes all understanding to start to flow in. Our primary work and most important discipline must be this openness, this humility, because it is human nature to trust in ourselves and our very small perspective, which has the corresponding effect of boxing God out. The story of sin is our effort to replace God with our own limited view and self-concern thinking that if we can just fill up as much space as possible with ourselves, 
that will make us happy. But unfortunately, unfortunately, what we find when we do this is that our lives end up too small, too anxious, and not being anywhere near enough. I need someone to save me from my little boxed-in life. And that someone is Jesus. Thanks be to God. Perhaps the best thing we can do is follow the lead of our children on this one. After all, Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew that they can best show us how to get near the kingdom of God. At the 11 a.m. worship, I believe, is it not, that we're going to be having our first communion service, and there will be some of our children coming forward for the very first time to the communion table with their arms outstretched in anticipation and trust to receive their first communion. They are invited Jesus to make a home in them, as should we all, to advocate to us through the Spirit, to remind us to remember Him. Being reminded of Jesus again in His words allows us to take another look at our lives, whether that be individually or corporately, as singular individuals or all together in in the groupings that we make. The best act of faith is not to be afraid of the advocacy of Jesus' words, making it right for us, and also His words calling us into the righteous life. That is a right-making life as we are called to be there for those we can be for. It all happens from that safety that feels like home, that sort of home life that we always have wanted and that is best for us. God is willing to dwell in us through the Spirit. That's what God's coming to us, standing beside us, And our taking God in is all about. And this home life is secure. God's never going to give up on us. No matter how much and how often we get it wrong, God will not abandon us despite our innate abilities to fall short in getting it right. For it's about love, after all. A love so strong, so compelling, We can move freely and not in fear. We can consider in a deeper way our place in it all, an ever-deepening relationship with God and this world that God loves so much. We find in the Scriptures that love is the first word and it will be the last. Love is the first act and it will be the last. God's Word tells us that God was there at the very beginning, hovering over the waters, and in this reading that Phoebe had for us today, we find a God in the very last chapter of the Bible in the book of Revelation talking about a God who comes down to us in a great city, whose light will shine the way for us, whose gates will not have to be barred, that there will be a God who opens up a way, not just for us, but for all people and the whole world. Ours is to remember that to be reminded by the Spirit, to remind each other and allow to flow through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds this amazing, gracious way of Jesus. I thank God that we have each other in this work and also that we have Jesus coming and going. Amen. Let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit for a prayer to the people. 
Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. Some countries have recently gone to or will be going to the polls to vote for new leaders and for issues important to their current situations, including parts of the U.S. Please be with the new and returning leaders around the world that they serve their citizens as well as the world community and work for the common good. Loving and just God. As our own Sierra Pacific Synod prepares for its assembly in a couple of weeks, be with those who will be gathering as they weigh and consider the various resolutions to be decided and the new leaders on the ballot. Let your spirit guide their hearts and minds that your kingdom on earth is blessed through the results of the assembly. Loving and just God. Thank you for the opportunities to host events and bring activity back into the St. John's facility and Sacramento community as we return to a new normal. Continue to allow St. John's to be a positive light in the city through such activity. Loving and just God. As Betty, Kaylin, and Sebastian receive their first communion later at the 11 o'clock service, be with them as they continue to grow in their faith, strengthening them each time they partake in the sacrament and receive the blessings of the resurrected Christ present in and around the elements. Holy Spirit, continue to nurture the rest of us in the same manner as we also receive these blessings. Loving and just God. Be with all those in need within our St. John's community, even as we pray specifically for Reverend Dwayne Decker, Crystal, Noah, Ingrid, Darlene, Nathan, Pastor Hoy San Lok, Kay Nemi, Jennifer, Beverly, Susan, Scott, Cameron, Jerome, all our Stephen ministers and those receiving their spiritual companionship, and those we each pray for individually. Loving and just God, in your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. After wishing peace to your neighbor, you're invited to uh, take your seat again. It's time for us to continue with the collection of our tithes and offerings. Some folks are doing that through the um, plates at the exits. Others are using the QR codes in the pews, both here or at home. Um, if you're a visitor with us this day, the gift we most hope from you is simply to be in touch. So fill out one of those welcome home cards and leave that in the plate. And now we continue with an offering of music. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A quick announcement before a final benediction. Um, next Saturday, uh, we, some of us will be going to the Kirkov Ranch to trim some of our grapes. So if you'd like to be a part of that, it's a family-friendly event. More information will be coming um, 9 to 11 at the ranch next Saturday. And now a blessing for all of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be so gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with great favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, live God's love in the world. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.